Okay, here's our horse model, and uh, we've got ourselves a base level skeleton on one side and the uh, the main spine and neck joints. Um, I guess the one thing that I really want to point out is, you know, looking at you know the placement of uh, of the the front shoulder, and that we're trying to mimic what uh, the actual range of motion is going to be on that. Uh, on that joint and essentially we're creating something that's going to allow it to you know, swing around you know the you know what the rib cage would be give it a range of motion more you know, kind of accurate rather than trying to you know, create some sort of scapulus that's actually going to float we're going to give the animator a nice easy you know you know a single fk control but making sure that you know, the radius of that control is going to be uh, what is necessary in order to actually get the range of motion so we kind of create a um, you know, it's a kind of an odd placement since you know, you know, the shoulder for this side is actually going to be on, you know, the other side of the uh, of the character. But that's uh, sometimes what uh, what's necessary. Um, the other things are just the same things I've uh, iterated before is that you know everything is, you know, basically in a plane, and we've got um, a basic parallel nature to that upper bone and uh, the foot bone um, in in the back leg. And the whole thing is kind of maintained in a plane. Um, one thing I did want to point out is kind of on the spine. Um, I'm going to jump back to our, our reference for a second. Um, and it's it's hard to tell because uh, we're wearing a saddle on this one, but the spine on um, on horses and a lot of you know uh, hoofed characters is very rigid. Um, there's very little bend and flex in it. There's some, but there there isn't a lot. So, you know, when designing the characters and doing the motion of those characters, um, I'm going to keep that in mind. And that a lot of the motion is going to come from the big, powerful muscles of, um, you know, of of the legs themselves. And um, there's a fair amount of of motion and flex in the neck, but the body has very little. So uh, let's take a quick break from the horse and let's look back at a dog, really quick. So, uh, basic, basic dog leg layout. So, um, this is kind of showing um, just a couple things. You know, the difference between you know our front leg and our back leg. This is just a basic working template uh, that I use. Uh, one of the things that I can try to do is, um, you know, uh, really try to keep um, you know everything that I believe to be in a plane, you know, in a plane, in so much to the way that I lay my joints out. So, you know, I have um, the, the main two, top two bones of my system essentially help to define the orientation, you know, of that plane. And then everything else is going to uh, ride inside of that. So, you know, moving uh, the position of the ankle um, is only going to, you know, be allowed within the plane that I'm defining um, by my uh, upper leg. Um, so that's a, a, a real help in uh, in getting the uh, the initial orientations right, and it's up to uh, you know hoping that the proportions uh, of the model um, will come up with something that uh, is going to agree with you know the type of rig that we're going to build. Um, so and then looking at the uh, front leg, it's the same thing. We've got uh, you know the large extension by default on on our shoulder looking for um, that that uh, increased range of motion that we're gonna that we're gonna have out of the character um, uh, but then the the initial plane that we're maintaining is really only for the top um, the plane really is going to be carried down throughout the whole uh, the whole arm but the uh, IK system that we're going to set up that we would use for is only going to govern the top two bones this really is going to be you know somewhat independent um, so depending on how um, a lot of times I get models that aren't exactly planar and it's easy to uh, readjust this in the pose and sometimes people like to be able to cheat that so um, I kind of leave this one this one a little more open than the others but uh, essentially you could define the front arm the same thing as an entire plane but uh, um, in this case um, we also wanted to show the similarity between, you know, uh, the human arm and what we'd see as, you know, like a canine or a cat arm, and that we've got, you know, 
the um, the main motion coming from the rotation plane of the uh, shoulder down to the wrist, and then the hand being uh, being very separate. Um, so one thing we can look at is um, how do we want to drive um, an IK on something that encompasses you know multiple bones uh, and have full control over over that system. Taking the uh, skeleton that is a result of our layout phase, we can uh, basically look at just a couple ways of solving this. You know, the easiest thing that we can do is we can literally just, you know, add an IK uh, between, you know, the top and the bottom um, and use that as a way to drive. Um, uh, if um, our bones, like in this, are actually identical in length, but the closer they are, the um, the more likely you're going to have you know, the ability of again, you know, the dog to be able to properly sit on its heels. Um, you you work out proportions this is exact, but you know, the closer the 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 easier you are going to get um, um, this thing to be able to collapse properly. The one thing that you're going to get, um, or you're actually you're not going to get um, with uh, just a single chain solution like this, or uh, is the ability to actually modify the degrees within them, being able to really control and offset what's going on in those special cases where um, you need to um, uh, augment a pose. So um, this actually is not the, the, the method that I generally use. Um, instead, I prefer to actually build a kind of a two-step system where um, uh, I generally only ever work with two bones within an IK solver at a time. Um, and then layer the systems so that I have control over each in, uh, individual part of that. Um, so we can kind of build one really quick. Um, easiest thing we can do is we can kind of, uh, we'll just make a duplication of this whole thing um, and make a, kind of a back set of bones. So um, And what I want to do is create a two-bone uh, IK solve right here that has the same overall length as this current three-bone. Um, uh, so I basically just want to, and what I want to do is I want to draw a parallel with um, with this top bone here, and I'm going to use that as the offset. So I'm going to basically have this system right on top of this system and be an offset from it. Um, so just uh, real quick. What I'll do is I'm just going to double um, this distance since I know that these are all equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just really quick, I'm going to detach my foot here and double this distance. Um, and then I'm going to uh, reattach my, my foot on the end of that, or the end of my leg. So, so now I essentially have, and actually I'm going to remove the foot from that. So, um, so now I have this, um, we can call this our, our up leg reverse. So, um, and I'm going to take in snap that back there and let's add an IK onto that. Okay, so I've got the first part. So we see this moves around, that's going to give us, you know, part of the motion. And uh, this up leg reverse has actually become the parent to the the regular up leg. So I'm actually going to take and parent that off of the up leg reverse. So now when my IK moves, that's going to give me control over that, that upper bone. Now the second part of it is actually going to be creating an IK on these lower two bones. Um, 
creating IK there and not doing anything with this top bone is going to leave this top bone free for us to actually do all of our offsets. So we'll still have um, rotational control over that. And then the IK on this one will give us um, the, the main compression that we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and create the IK there. So we'll go ahead and create the IK. Oh, let me select the correct one. Oh, my foot end. Okay. And I'm just going to create really quick a nerve sphere. That's going to become a really quick control object for us. Okay. Okay. So we've got that. We've got a foot control object. And everything is awesome. Okay. So now I can see I get the same basic result that I had before with um, the single IK, but I have the added ability of being able to have an extra offset on top of that. Now the last part of the system is, well, we now have two IKs that are coming together, but we want to be able to maintain those planes. So just get this back to where we were starting from. And usually we're going to create some kind of control for um, uh, for the pull target of of the leg. And I'm just going to create another nerb sphere really quick. And drive this over to um, where I I'll just go right off of the knee actually. So, and we'll put this you know straight straight back here. And then, um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just create a quick pull target um, with that for the first IK. That controls the um, the reverse uh, leg there. Go to our animation tools, constrain, and yeah, put a pull vector constraint on that. There we go. And because we're on the opposite end of the initial direction, we'll twist this back 180 degrees. There we go. Now the second one we have two options. One thing that we can do is we can pull vector it off of this one uh, directly to the pull target, but there could be instances in which um, we could actually get them uh, because of where this will be for singularity on that axis versus this axis, we could actually have them flipping uh, uh, not at the same time or in opposition to one another. So what I tend to do is actually have the IK of one of, of of this small system being driven by the main system. So it actually select um, that joint there as the pull target for the second uh, IK solver. So we'll constrain pull vector on that. And then again, we'll take that and we'll twist that 180 degrees to back where it was. So now I have a control for the entire pull, and uh, I still have my main, you know, bendable system. Okay. Um, another thing I want to discuss right now is um, something that's kind of glossed over is the way that a lot of these pull targets work, and um, you know, the there's a lot of people who talk about like no flip solutions and things, and and one quick thing that you can do is you can look at, you know, what is the primary motion that you're going to be given to, you know, to any system. Um, and something like, um, like a leg, especially on, you know, quadruped, is mainly going to move in one, you know, in this plane. Um, how often are you going to see a, you know, a dog that's going to go that high up? So um, what we need to look at is, 
where we want to put our pull target in relationship to you know that major that majority plane what I tend to do is um, you actually want to move it outside that plane um, if my pull target is within the plane then the singularity between the top of the system the bottom of the system and uh, the pull target are more likely to come in contact with one another and I'll get a flip but if this is outside that system say I rotate this off to the side you know 90 degrees off to the side um, and then I compensate for that you know by putting you know by untwisting you know the the IKs you know back so now I can essentially take my pull target once I figure it where I want it to be and leave it because I'm never gonna really hit that singularity you know I can go all the way around and I'm never gonna flip so unless um, my character is gonna do something really fancy um, I'm probably not gonna have um, a pull flip so um, on most of my quadrupeds you know I tend to you know still maintain control for the animators by giving them a pull target that they can use to to modify that twist if they want but um, I usually give them control of being able to have that knee you know in line with the character or off to the side and by default we usually put them off to the side so it's something that they almost never need to worry about and then generally we end up having a control again when we were talking about the um, the whole plane of of the leg continues through the foot usually the foot control will end up controlling um, the pole as well so usually from the foot we can rotate that and that would end up um, controlling like a parent to the to the pole target to twist that as well showing a quick example of uh, basically driving that on you know our human uh, essentially just you know uh, orientation of our main foot control keeping the whole leg and foot in a plane gives us a very quick and very easy way to pose uh, whether it's a dog a cat or a human or a horse um, and then maintaining the flexibility to do you know offsets if we need to on top of that um, by moving uh, by ro rotating the individual planes um, or doing uh, I guess I've got twist offsets or whatever however we want to end up controlling that so that would be uh, that would be overall uh, leg plane systems we're jumping around a little bit but one thing we glossed over was um, we talked about uh, the horse and how the leg anchors to the body and the way that you get a real um, top heavy feel if you've got a character who is you know uh, very tall in relationship to its length and um, if you have a tall character and you've got the legs you know hinging uh, attaching to the body very low like on the underside of the belly then your character will have a tendency to look top heavy but in the uh, situation of having characters you know based on you know in this case Komodo dragons or alligators um, you know whose uh, body you know legs hinged no closer to the center of their body um, center or lower part of their body um, they don't have that same top heavy feel mainly because of the long length of their body so like on sorcerers we ended up creating a dragon that had uh, had eight legs and um, it was it was very long so when we were looking at the overall design we mainly looked at uh, crocodiles and Komodo dragons um, for the structure of the legs the way that it was going to fold the way that um, the legs are going to um, swing out from the side of 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 the character's body um, and have the follow-through based on uh, the rotation of the spine if we watch you know as the Komodo dragon walks that you know as his spine twists from side to side it helps to swing and give um, extra reach and extension to to the character so another thing to, to keep in mind they're basically like uh, I think they're referred to generally as sidewalking characters but uh, salamanders and a lot of lizards are essentially the same way where um, the uh, uh, the the legs essentially stay um, rather perpendicular 
um, you know, coming out, uh, you've got a vertical spine, they come, you know, rather perpendicular out to the side, um, and then as the spine uh, moves and flexes as the character turns, that gives extra extension to their reach. You know, again, the Komodo um, is a pretty good example. As you can see, his head goes from side to side, and when he goes to one side, um, you know, that gives ex uh, extra reach to the arm on the, on the previous side. So, um, that's the other type of leg motion and uh, um, when to have your characters hinge from the bottom versus the top.